Right, for those of you that read Design Emotion a lot, you've probably realized that I am a big fan of iLogic. So this is just a little trick called normalizing that a lot of people don't know about with iLogic, but it's a really important step if you're gonna do configurable assemblies. So here we've got a configurable model. It's just a little enclosure. And if I bring up my form, you can see that I can change to different options. You can see the dimensions are changing, colors are changing. And in this scenario, you can see that two of the holes disappear because the box gets too narrow for them, so it suppresses those holes. So we've got some different different options. We can take the lid off. All well and good. But when you actually want to start using these components, you don't want to have to keep copying the assembly, copying all the files, renaming everything. So there's this handy little tool, if I just save that quickly, and start a new assembly. So I'm just creating a new assembly here to contain these boxes. Right, now usually when you're placing components in an assembly, you'd use place or place from content center. This bottom option here, place iLogic component, allows you to select an assembly that you've created for uh, this purpose. And when you place it, it comes up with some options to, to set some parameters. But if I just click OK to that and place that at the origin, that's a unique instance of that of that box that I was showing you in the other window just before. So you can see here that in the browser it's called it box assembly template dash 01 and you'll see if I go to the folder it's created this unique instance. So it's copied and renamed a little bit like copy design in Vault. Now that's fine we can copy that paste it and then we've got two instances of the same box and then we might want to place one that's in a different configuration. So once again, I go into place iLogic component, pick that same template, set it in my assembly. And once again, that's a unique instance. So if for example, I want this one now to be the blue option. I could go in and edit it, turn on the form and pick what I think is the blue option, which is C. Now, we come across a problem here, and this is the point of the whole video. You can see that it's telling me that the component named box shell colon one was not found. If we go back in and have a look at what we're actually dealing with here, you can see that there is no box shell dot oh one, uh, sorry, colon one. And that's because when iLogic created a copy of that assembly, it's called this new one box shell dash oh two. Just to make that a little bit clearer, I'm going to go into the original template and show you what the rule is doing. So here's the select case where we select the box size. And you can see that for case C, it's trying to make the cutouts that are supposed to be suppressed. It's trying to suppress those and it's looking for a component called box shell colon 1. Now box shell colon 1 exists in this assembly, but obviously in our placed iLogic component, it's now called something else. So to get around this, we use a process called normalizing. So I'm just going to clear that assembly out and go back to my assembly template. And you should do this with any iLogic model that you're ever going to use uh, place iLogic component for. So what you'll see is we have these, and inventor by default puts a colon 1 to indicate that it's the first instance of that component. Now because it's an iLogic model we're going to be controlling these parts individually. We don't need that, that colon there. So I'm just going to delete that off and I'm going to do that for all the components that I require. So that's those three because we're going to be dealing with those three. So they now have generic names. They're just box shell, ceiling strip and box lid. I can do it to the sketch as well. 
if I save that now, there is one other slight issue, and that is that now in my rules, the code is still referring to the instances with the colon one on the end. So this is where a handy little trick comes into play. I could go through and delete those colon ones out manually, but that's going to take a while, especially if I have a number of rules and a number of components. So iLogic in the rule editor has this little search and replace dialog, and the easy way to do it is to just put in a colon one there, find what, we're going to look for colon one and we're going to replace it with nothing. And then I'm just going to say replace all in all rules. And that'll go through all the rules in the assembly, look for all the instances of a colon one uh, instance designator and replace it with nothing. So we've basically stripped them all off through the whole code. Now I can save that model and close it and go back to our boxes model. And what you'll see now is when I place one of those instances, While the assembly has been called dash 03, inside that assembly, the components don't have instance designators. So that assembly has been normalized. Now what that means is, let me just place one more. Now we can have two unique instances of the box, and I can go into one, run the form, take the lid off and change it to a C size. Let's just do that again. And the other one can be a completely different setting. Let's choose D. So you can see there that normalizing has given us the ability to control those independently without changing the code to suit the individual instances. So that's normalizing and you should bear that in mind if you're going to create iLogic assemblies that you're going to then use place iLogic component to put into other assemblies. I'm going to post up this assembly if anyone wants to play with it and learn from it. Thanks.